You see that mountain over there? Yeah, one of these days I'm gonna climb that mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Grandma and Grandpa used to play Then I float on down the river To Cajun Hideaway have hundreds of things on our minds at any moment, often struggling to keep track of everything we need to do. But fortunately, there's one important thing we don't have to worry about remembering, breathing. When you breathe, you transport oxygen to the body's cells to keep them working and clear your system of the carbon dioxide that this work generates. Breathing, in other words, keeps the body alive. So how do we accomplish this crucial and complex task without even thinking about it? The answer lies in our body's respiratory system. Like any machinery, it consists of specialized components and requires a trigger to start functioning. Here, the components are the structures and tissues making up the lungs, as well as the various other respiratory organs connected to them. And to get this machine moving, we need the autonomic nervous system, our brain's unconscious control center for the vital functions. As the body prepares to take in oxygen-rich air, this system sends a signal to the muscles around your lungs, flattening the diaphragm and contracting the intercostal muscles between your ribs to create more space for the lungs to expand. Air then whooshes into your nose and mouth, through your trachea, and into the bronchi that split at the trachea's base, with one entering each lung. Like tree branches, these small tubes divide into thousands of tinier passages, called bronchioles. It's tempting to think of the lungs as huge balloons, but instead of being hollow, they're actually spongy inside, with the bronchioles running throughout the parenchyma tissue. At the end of each bronchiole is a little air sac called an alveolus, wrapped in capillaries full of red blood cells containing special proteins called hemoglobin. The air you've breathed in fills these sacs, causing the lungs to inflate. Here is where the vital exchange occurs. At this point, the capillaries are packed with carbon dioxide, and the air sacs are full of oxygen. But due to the basic process of diffusion, the molecules of each gas want to move to a place where there is a lower concentration of their kind, 
so as oxygen crosses over to the capillaries, the hemoglobin grabs it up, while the carbon dioxide is unloaded into the lungs. The oxygen-rich hemoglobin is then transported throughout the body via the bloodstream. But what do our lungs do with all that carbon dioxide? Exhale it, of course. The autonomic nervous system kicks in again, causing the diaphragm to ball up and the intercostal muscles to relax, making the chest cavity smaller and forcing the lungs to compress. The carbon dioxide-rich air is expelled, and the cycle begins again. So that's how these spongy organs keep our bodies efficiently supplied with air. Lungs inhale and exhale between 15 and 25 times a minute, which amounts to an incredible 10,000 liters of air each day. That's a lot of work, but don't sweat it. Your lungs and your autonomic nervous system have got it covered. It's one of the most formidable places on earth, and Lincoln Hall said that's why he wanted to climb Mount Everest. The experience is incredibly intense because it is so dangerous. That's somewhat of an understatement. In 2006, on the way down from the summit, Lincoln Hall collapsed from altitude sickness. His companions had to keep going, and Hall was left for dead. Against all odds, he survived 12 hours alone. It's just very hard to to uh, talk. I wasn't afraid of death, but I wasn't going to let it happen. I just had to stay alive and somehow stay awake till the morning when at least there would be some sun which would carry some sort of warmth. He carried the scars with him every day. His friends say if anyone was going to survive that trek, it would have been Lincoln Hall. Lincoln always, he was so at home in the mountains, he was such a good climber that he, he had an aura of invincibility about him. But that strength couldn't conquer his mesothelioma. He was exposed to asbestos when, as a child, he helped his father build two cubby houses. Hall was a spiritual man. He later told of an out-of-body experience as he lay dying on the mountain. You know, I didn't want to be there, but suddenly I wasn't there. I wasn't there on the rock. However, I could see myself on the rock, about 10 metres away, maybe a metre or two above. As a Buddhist, Lincoln Hall didn't believe in God, but when asked if he was wrong, what would God say to him? He would say something like, so you've chosen this path. Welcome anyway. Lincoln Hall said reaching the top of Mount Everest was the closest thing to achieving enlightenment, and every day he had since cheating death was a bonus. Adrian Rich.